Hello friends, welcome back to Scripture Sketches. I'm curious how much thought you've given to the reality that being a believer in Jesus Christ affects your relationships with other believers in Jesus Christ. And I'm talking about the way you relate to them. In this episode of Scripture Sketches, we're going to be looking at a very difficult situation and how that situation changes because the two people involved are believers in Jesus Christ. Let's get to the sketch. All right, friends, as we dive back into Philemon chapter one, actually it's the only chapter in the book of Philemon. It's one of the only books that's that short. This is just a short letter between friends to set the stage in the context again. Paul is in prison and he has been met by this young man, Onesimus. And turns out Onesimus is the slave of his friend Philemon. And so Paul's interaction with Onesimus has led to Onesimus coming to faith in Jesus Christ. And Paul is writing this letter to Philemon, sending it back with Onesimus and telling Philemon what has happened in Onesimus' life and encouraging him to receive him back and to not punish him for running away. In fact, he is encouraging him to treat him as a brother no longer as a slave. And so we're continuing on in verses 12 through 15 here. And Paul is continuing that kind of uh, appeal to Philemon. He says, I'm sending him back to you, sending my very heart. I've always thought it's interesting how Paul was quick to speak with deep emotion about the people in his life and quick to Give others a good impression of them. That's what Paul is saying here. His insights into this whole situation revolve around more than just slavery. He's thinking in terms of who we are together, who we are related to each other. We are now brothers in Christ. We are truly family. And so therefore he says things like this, sending my very heart. Verse 13 I would have been glad to keep him with me in order that he might serve me on your behalf during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I preferred to do nothing without your consent in order that your goodness might not be by compulsion, but of your own accord. Now, a couple more things to notice here. Paul knows that his relationship with Philemon is one where he knows that Philemon would want to be of help to him. That's the kind of relationships they have. So he says, in order that he might serve me on your behalf, you see, he knows that Philemon would want to do this. He goes on and he says, but I would want to do nothing without your consent so that your goodness might be of your own accord. And you see, Paul is believing the best of his friend Philemon as well, that he'd want to be of help to, to him as he's out spreading the gospel message. And in this case, as he's in prison for that message, he continues in verse 15. For this perhaps is why he was parted from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a bond servant, but more than a bond servant, as a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. There's all kinds of things we could draw out in this section. But I want us to notice something, which really is where I'm going to spend the rest of my time. Notice this word, perhaps. Paul is starting to dig into the realm of what God might have been doing behind the scenes in allowing all of this to happen. And saying, this is perhaps why he was parted from you for a while. You see, God's purpose is always bigger than we know. There's so many things going on and the circumstances in our life, whether it be the losses or the gains or the joys or the sorrows, have more to do with what God is doing in a broad scale throughout history and throughout the purpose of our lives overall than it does necessarily with the comfort or the temporary setbacks that we're experiencing. And so Paul is digging deeper. He's wondering if perhaps Onesimus ran away in the first place because God wanted 
Philemon and Paul to have him back forever more than a bondservant as a beloved brother. You see, Paul understood there are bigger things at stake here, bigger things going on than just the fact that a runaway slave is now being returned and that he's appealing to Philemon not to be punitive or angry toward his runaway slave. No, he's saying, my friend Philemon, you have an opportunity here to put your faith to action. You have an opportunity to make him this beloved brother that he mentions practically, both in the flesh and in the Lord, he's saying he is a brother to you. So what would that look like to receive him back as a brother and not as a bondservant? Friends, this is just such a cool, such a cool opportunity for us to ponder this because we're talking about slavery here. This is an institution all of us find heinous. This is a situation that all of us feel would be just the very last thing we would want to have true and perpetuated. But yet, in their culture at that time, it would have been very understandable and even expected that Philemon would bring some sort of punishment onto Onesimus for having run away. And apparently, Onesimus may have taken some things from the household as he left, which we'll see in the next section. But friends, Christianity, Christian fellowship as brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ goes much deeper than that because he's now more than a bondservant. Don't forget that. He now is a beloved brother. And so we've got to look deeper. We've got to look at these things the way that God looks at them. All right, let's move forward and let's sketch on this just a little bit. All right, let's talk for a moment about what I would call earthly relationships. Right? In earthly relationships, there are all kinds of roles that we play. It could be spouse, it could be employer, uh, it could be, um, I'll say child, because we all are the child of someone could be a leader of some sort, or let me flip it around, could be the follower in some capacity, right? So we all play these different roles and these roles each, because of what they are, have their responsibilities that flow out of them. Okay. And these responsibilities often connect with the way that we interact with others. Are you following me so far? So a spouse relates to their spouse differently than others. An employer relates to the people they lead differently than they do with other people. The child relates to their parent differently than they do with others. Those are the earthly ramifications of relationships and roles that we have in life. But let's stop for a moment. And I guess the best way to define this one is called heavenly and what I mean by that is the way that heaven views our situation. Now, our heavenly situation, by being children of God through our faith in Jesus Christ, does not change the roles that we were in. Okay, We may still be a spouse. We may still be an employer and so forth. Okay, But what does change is that this relational aspect that we are talking about here and how we relate to others could very well change when we keep in mind that we're talking about our heavenly position as citizens of the kingdom of God and as brothers and sisters in Christ. You see, our interactions toward others change because our relationship to each other has changed. So it's as if something has been added to these roles. Not only are we a spouse or an employer or a child or a leader or a follower, we are now that plus something more. We are now fellow Christians. I'm going to say believers just for the sake of space over here. 
So we're fellow believers. And this relationship is the one that becomes primary now. So in the case of Philemon and Onesimus, Philemon is no longer the master and Onesimus the slave. That all changes when Christ comes into the picture. Philemon and Onesimus are now brothers. They are now co-heirs, if you want to think of it that way, in Christ. They will receive together the same inheritance, the same blessing from heaven. It comes down to them both in this life and in the future because of their connection with Jesus Christ. So what Paul is encouraging us to do is to think about those things. He wants us to ponder those things and he wants us to live our lives now in light of it. Live now in light of this fact that we are fellow believers first. Jesus, teach us. Teach us how to view our relationships with other believers as primary when it comes to how we interact with each other. Whether that's with complete strangers we've never met before or with people in the various roles that we fill in life. Teach us how to be a testimony to the world based on the primacy of our connection together through Jesus Christ.